free will. A concept still difficult to define. Are we free to act on our own designs, or are we simply following the patterns of our biological personalities? And if so, what's the difference between our wet mushy brain programming and the mathematical deductions of an artificial intelligence? And how close are the two, especially when the lines blur and one seeks to replicate the other? Hi again, Rick here with a cultural index on the Cylons of Battlestar Galactica reimagined fame. Now, the Cylons are the first mechanical race that we've looked into, and although they've evolved and adapted over time, their origin as a robot race, the cybernetic lifeform nodes of various designs, give them a very limited culture. But what there is forms a basic society nonetheless. So I don't know as much about Galactica as other topics, despite seeing all of the series, but after a road of 35 to 20, I guess I'd better learn fast. Also, serious spoilers inbound for a nine year old series, I guess. The overall history of the Cylons is pretty well mapped out, but very sparse in the actual details. It all starts with... well, even that's up for debate, as all this has happened before. But let's start with the origin of the current Cylon iteration. Developed by Greystone Industries under contract from the Capricorn Defence Force, the precursor to the Cylon was very much developed as a weapon of war, and after their first victory at Atlas Arena, they soon became widely used as free labour. However, the Cylon's intelligence, designed to be adaptable and to learn, continued to grow as they soon came to view themselves as a slave race. Rebelling against the Twelve Colonies, they instigated the First Cylon War, which eventually came to an end when five more advanced Cylons, from the Lost Thirteenth Colony, made contact with their younger cousins and convinced them to end their campaign against the humans. These five are the architects of the modern Cylon, and as such, they're the social influence for much of their culture. Having originated on the long-lost world of Earth, these Cylons were so advanced that differentiating between Cylon and human was impossible. They ate, slept, fracked, and even aged in every way a human could. They themselves, harbouring no resentment towards humanity, offer the Cylons a future the ability to resurrect their minds in new bodies, and the technology that created them, the understanding to create synthetic humans. You see, they too had been rebelled on by their own creations, when their own centurions turned on them. From then on, the evolution of the Cylon became less mechanical, and delved into bioengineering and the development of artificial biology. It likely began with the development of the hybrid model, something that was human in appearance, but more mechanical in nature, lacking much of what we would identify as conscious thought. Eight new human Cylons were created to further increase their survivability through the potential procreation and, perhaps, with the hope to better understand and cooperate with humanity. Although the small band of the 13th tribe shared much in common with the humans, they elected not to force their own doctrine or beliefs onto their creations. You see, the Cylons had developed their own monotheistic religion, centred on the one true god that oversaw all, human and Cylon alike, while the Five shared their primary religion of humanity, the Lords of Kobol. The importance of the Cylon belief seems somewhat paradoxical, but in an interesting way. After all, faith, the belief in something that cannot be truly known, can be considered a prerequisite for religion of any type, but the very nature of programming is mathematical, and at odds with the concept of variabilities and unknowns. So the very fact that a Cylon may choose to believe in something can be seen as evidence of how far they've evolved. They first began to adopt this religion back when they were under colonial control, and maintained it throughout their entire existence. Several commandments are obeyed by the Cylons, including the description of behaviours considered sinful, such as self-termination. Other elements include the opinion that the monotheistic god loves all equally, and to shun the affectation is wasteful, hence another reason the Cylons choose to oppose humanity. It's a common belief that the hybrids, the early humanoid Cylon prototypes that now function as the brain of their base stars, are connected to god on a level that cannot be understood by conscious thought, and that humanity created the Cylons to be god's new work to replace humans. After the Five were once again betrayed by their creations, 
It was these eight models that assumed leadership roles over the rest of the Cylon construct. Each of these models is produced in large quantities, and each shares the same base personality with its copies. However, once first born, their environmental factors shape them to be more individualistic. Physically identical to humans, they are however artificial in nature and could perform actions such as interfacing with specialised fluidic technologies through touch, which is how they fly their base stars. They also have a more advanced and accurate memory, but these can be erased or falsified. On some level too, their programming can be altered, as with the case of them being forbidden to research the identities of their five creators. On the death of a Cylon, their memories are transmitted to the Resurrection Arc, where they are then downloaded into a new body to awaken anew. During this process, it's possible for them to access more of their mind, and many perceive this as visions, and they can too, in fact, dream. Possibly of electric sheep. Uncertain. On waking, they are often in a state of panic or confusion, having just moments earlier experienced death, and are attended to by nurses to placate and soothe them. This shows a distinct level of care for their own kind, and a clear sense of compassion. Interestingly enough, a humanoid Cylon can project their own reality, meaning that if they so desire, they can literally substitute reality in place of their own, literally experiencing an illusion. This projection can be shared with other Cylons, and remains the only form of artistic expression left in their culture, as it's entirely left to the whim of the creator and their experiences. They share the same emotional spectrum as humans, and are motivated by many of the same desires. One directive that they seek to achieve is the ability to procreate naturally, beyond simply constructing new models. This has resulted in several failed attempts of sexual reproduction between humanoid Cylons, and the insemination of humans, and vice versa. Their belief in a god that loves all its creations led some to the opinion that love is crucial to the production of a child. However, as mentioned, each Cylon, once exposed to environmental factors, basically becomes its own person, although some traits are seemingly constant. The number ones seem to gravitate towards positions of power in the Cylon hierarchy, and although they reach action by vote, it seems that the ones maintain a manipulative control over many of the other models of Cylon. In fact, it is the one model that removed the five from power and instigated the second Cylon war, this one ending in the near total annihilation of the twelve colonies. They are stoic atheists, and possess a hatred of humanity, often allowing this spite to colour their actions. The number twos enjoy mincing words. They often believe in a sense of destiny and spin tales to achieve a desired outcome. Equally as manipulative as the ones, the twos prefer to act as an unreliable guide to others with mystic suggestions and cryptic conversations. The three model was much more logical in its manipulations, although with a curious streak. Perhaps motivated by a desire to complete any gaps in their knowledge, they seem to have a proficiency for speech, investigation, deduction, and on several occasions seem to usurp authority or assume it of their own volition, despite the vote oriented format of Cylon governance. Number four possess a calm demeanour that often acts as a rational voice among the humans and Cylons. Their approachable demeanour makes them perfect as passive spies, while their logical approach to things marks them as scientists and doctors. Fives stick to the mission. They follow orders and are incredibly loyal to the original goals of the Cylons, and they seem not to allow themselves to be emotionally compromised. This makes them excel at deep cover operations, where they don't allow morality to interfere with their actions, enabling them to betray, instigate and kill without remorse. Number six is often seen as a very religious model, and very much a passionate individual. She easily utilises her beauty to her advantage, and seeks to understand the true nature of being alive. This passion is reflected however in the ease which she can act on violent impulses. Of the eight models, the sixes seem to enjoy diversification the most, sporting varying outfits and hairstyles reflecting the more impulsive characteristics of this line. Number seven was rendered a defunct line, and very much a creative model, designed to reflect on decisions. It was known for being sensitive, thoughtful, 
and seemingly enjoyed the arts. It's a shame this line was killed off by the number ones, as an artistic influence would have gone a long way in building the society of the Cylons. All records of the Seven's existence was purged from the memories of the other models to cover up the destruction due to a jealous act. And finally the number eight. This model was created with a military mindset and abilities to allow it to perform well as a soldier. The design necessitated a certain level of morality and loyalty to ensure the line would remain dedicated to the Cylon cause. However, this also meant that when an individual defected to the colonial fleet, it did so on a moral basis and remained true to its own ideals. This model was often easily manipulated by those in higher positions of power, such as the Number Ones. These humanoid Cylons, as mentioned, were the driving force of the race and positioned themselves over the Centurions and Raiders. Centurions were capable of independent thought but limited on purpose to prevent a similar uprising as seen repeatedly throughout history. When this inhibitor was removed, however, they clearly showed an understanding of self-preservation and perhaps even a modicum of revenge. Basic human emotions to be sure, but there nonetheless. The Raiders have a basic intelligence about the level of a dog, and have shown the ability to follow orders as well as form their own tactical actions. However, a raider that doesn't follow commands is often considered faulty and lobotomized to rectify the error. It's a strange thing to see the humanoid Cylons making the same choices their creators did, as did their creators of those creators and the like. And as the Pythian Scrolls say, all this has happened before, all this will happen again. The Cylons are a relatively young race literally being created rather than evolving naturally means that their culture is still forming. What elements that they do have are based on emulation of humans. Their monotheistic faith, their technology, their drive to survive are all imparted from human culture. As such it's unlikely we'll see a truly unique society, especially given how the series ends and the ultimate reveal that the future of the Cylons is to effectively become indistinguishable from humanity. They had an entire line of humanoid Cylons devoted to culture and artistic creativity, but it was destroyed by an act of petty betrayal, not by the humans, but by one of their own. Thanks for listening to this index, even if it was a little light on the culture. As usual, the next episode will be one of two choices, with either a look into the Nordic-inspired Asgardians of the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or Raider Culture from the Fallout series. Hey, I thought I'd mix it up a bit with some more obscure choices. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to leave a like on the appropriate comment to cast your vote. I won't forget this time, it was a bugger to count them all up manually. And until next video, I've been Rick, thanks again, and goodbye.